Hey everybody, so I'm still in London right now. I'm in my hotel. Um, it's 10 p.m. right now. Not that late, but I'm pretty tired because I've been working nonstop for the last two days. But I thought I would make a quick video about the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, about all the little things, like the stuff that that most general YouTubers and reviews probably wouldn't cover in their initial hands-on. They might cover this late on in an in-depth review, but right now, I feel like nobody's going to be focusing on these things. First things first, I've been using this phone all day now. I got this today, so I immediately put my SIM card in and made it my main phone. And it's going to be my main phone probably for the foreseeable future, for maybe the rest of the year, because I'm really, really loving this phone. It kind of has like everything that I need. I'll give you a quick example. This phone, um, Huawei just has super fast charging. So this phone comes with a 40 watt charger. That's, I believe, the highest capacity, most powerful charging brick out there. So I came back from my, I came back to a hotel after being out all day. This phone had like 26% battery life. I plugged in the phone, went to the bathroom to take a shit. So I watched a couple of YouTube videos when I came out. And then I looked at the phone and it was like 87% battery life. It was crazy. It was plugged in for, for maybe 20 minutes. Definitely not even half an hour, like 20 minutes. It went from 20 some percent to 87 percent meanwhile i also plugged in my iphone 10s max when i came back that phone had about 10 percent battery life and then right now it's still it's been like in like 45 minutes since i plugged in it and it's still at like just 35 36 percent the last i checked so the iphone charges a lot slower and on top of that this phone just has a 4200 million hour battery that's huge so it, it definitely should last me all day when i got the phone today when I took it out of the box, it was already at 56% battery life. So that's the only reason why I came home at like 20 something percent. Because usually if I leave the house with a full charge, it would definitely last me all day. But anyway, apologies for going on a tangent. Let's get to immediately all the little things I want to talk about. So you notice that I'm using Nova Launcher right now. Just because uh, in general, I really like the way Nova Launcher looks. And I like features like double tap to wake the screen. And then also be able to swipe down from anywhere to get the notification. That's pretty cool. Um, the Huawei default software does not let you do that. You have to swipe from the top to get your notification. If you swipe from the middle, you only get that kind of, you know, the iOS ripoff search menu that I don't like. And also no double tap to lock the screen on Huawei stock UI. So that means you have to reach for the power button every single time. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult because I'm holding phone left-handed. So it's just weird to have to do this every time when a double tap is just a lot easier especially when it's on a table too so anyway i have nova launcher on but unfortunately there's a bug right now when you have nova launcher you cannot use swiping navigation so if you saw my hands-on video i i was using swiping navigation the whole way i'm a big fan of swiping navigation but unfortunately if you use swiping navigation and you run nova launcher the animation becomes really jerky i'll just show you really quick so we're going to navigation so now we'll go gesture so now when you go into swiping navigation, it kind of works like this. So you swipe from the edges to go back and you swipe from the top to go home. And then you swipe up and hold to bring up the app overview, which is just like the iPhone, right? But watch when I swipe up now, it pauses a little bit before it goes back to the home screen. This is a bug. But now that I go back to Huawei stock launcher, this is EMUI. Now swiping navigation works perfectly. When I swipe up, I go home and there's this little cool animation like I'm flicking the app away. See, I really like that. But unfortunately, if I go back to Nova Launcher, then now every time I go home, you see there's a little jerk, there's a little hiccup and that gets on my nerves. So that means I have to go back to using the button setup because I really want to have Nova Launcher. So if I have to give up swiping, then so be it. But there is one benefit to using navigation buttons. It's that you can open split screen again, because when you're using swiping navigation on the Mate 20 Pro, you don't get to, at least so far, I haven't found a way to trigger split screen mode. So that means if you're using swiping navigation, you, have, you essentially have to give up split screen. So now the second thing, this phone has stereo speakers. Sound comes out from the top earpiece and also down below, but you see there is no speaker grill. That's because sound comes off from the USB-C port. This is a new innovation by Huawei where they built the speaker into the into the port, which is pretty cool. Um, and, the, and the speaker sounds really loud. I tested it yesterday already, but we'll do another test. 
So this OLED panel, it's beautiful. So see, sound is, it's coming out from here right now. And also out here. So despite having those speaker grill, this speaker is pretty good. I mean, it sounds pretty full. You can actually hear a bit of bass. And now you're wondering what happens when you plug in a USB-C cable and play sound. And I've tried it. It doesn't affect the sound that much. It affects it a little bit. But not too bad. So let me pull it out. So this is the sound. And now number three, one of the weaknesses of the Huawei P20 Pro was that 4K recording didn't have OIS or EIS, so it was jerky as hell. The Mate 20 Pro, luckily, good news, fixes that because now I shot this um, at 4K and there is stabilization. This is pretty smooth. It's about it's quite good on par with Apple and Samsung's phones. And the camera overall has just been improved a lot. So this is a mode that I cover already in hands on, but I really like it. This is that cinematic mode that adds color to the humans. So this is why the Kirin 980 is so powerful because it is doing all this in real time. It is like analyzing the humans on screen and then adding color to them accordingly. So now I'm gonna show you some uh, photo samples. I'm, I'm gonna make a separate video later comparing photos and videos between the Huawei Mate 20 Pro and the iPhone XS Max and the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. So that video will be the more hands-on camera look. This is just a brief look, but you see this camera is awesome. This is one of the reasons why I'm gonna make the Mate 20 probably my daily driver. I'm gonna get the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 and the OnePlus 6T soon. To be honest, I don't think those phones will be able to beat the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. But to those phones' credit, they'll be a lot cheaper too. They'll probably be like $400 cheaper. But this camera is just, this is really awesome. So one more little thing I want to show you is that as mentioned in my hands-on, this phone has a wide-angle lens. But what I forgot to mention before was that when you go in the wide-angle lens, it actually allows you to get in closer to the subject. It allows you to take macro shots. Give you a quick example. I have here on me the iPhone XS Max. So now notice I cannot get too close. If I get up close like this, the camera cannot focus. I have to pull out a little bit up to this point just to get get the flower like to focus correctly to be clear in the frame. Now that's no fault of the iPhone. That's just a limitation of these lenses, of a camera lens. But the Huawei Mate 20 Pro's wide angle lens for some reason has a deeper focal length so you can actually get all the way in. So you see right now it's still in focus. I mean, it's a little bit dark because of my room, but the fact is I can get much closer to something when I'm using the wide angle lens. Now, interestingly, if I switch back to the one to the normal lens, now it's like the same thing at the iPhone. I have to pull out like this to get focus. If I go in a little bit, you see it's blurry, it loses focus. So that's really cool that when you go to a wide angle lens, you actually can use it as a macro lens. And also the face unlock is really fast, particularly if you turn on the setting to unlock immediately without needing you to swipe up on the screen. And also if you turn on lift to wake. So now a lot of times I'll show you really quick. I'm just gonna lift it up. It, it just unlocks in like not even a second, like half a second. Like that every time. I d so basically, I don't think I'll need to use the fingerprint sensor at all, even though that works just fine. But just the face unlock is so fast and it unlocks immediately every time. Every time I bring the phone up to my face, it's like already the screen's on and it locks. Okay, so that's about it for now. I need to go to sleep. I'm really tired. I'm going to have more on this phone. Thanks for watching.